So if you've got one of these 300Ds uh, and you have to do oil cooler lines, there's a very good possibility when you undo the lower oil cooler line, it's gonna look like that. And it doesn't show up on camera real, real well, but those threads are pretty much gone. You can compare it to the top. See how the top looks nice and the bottom not nice. So this is actually the oil cooler off my parts car. Um, I don't know what the top fitting looks like on mine, and but I know the bottom is about like that. Now I did get it to tighten up and I was gonna just run it, but the more and more I thought about it, the more and more I did not feel comfortable about it. And like I said, I came over to look at this one to see how it looked uh, and it's no better. And so I did a little research and one of the Mercedes authorized repairs was to machine this off, um, drill it, tap it, and thread in a fitting there, a steel fitting. And so I did a little research on that and you know, trying to find one of those fittings. And we've already got two of those fittings right here on our parts car. These are the same type of fitting that's on the oil cooler one, except these are steel. And so we can unthread one of these. And I think what I'll do, since the top fitting on that oil cooler is okay, I think I'll only do the bottom one. We'll drill it, tap it, and put one of these fittings on it. And and we'll swap in that oil cooler. I've already got the one in my car. Uh, it's not leaking or anything. I just, I don't feel comfortable with it. I haven't driven it just because I'm scared that those threads will not hold and it'll blow that line off the bottom and I'll lose oil again. And it doesn't seem like I damaged it the first time, but I feel like I'm lucky that it didn't and that I don't want to take that chance of it happening again. And so I haven't driven it. So here we are. Let me take this fitting off and uh, ordered a, from what I could tell, this was 18 millimeter 1.5 threads from what I read. And so ordered a bit, a drill bit and a tap. So hopefully that's what it is. And we will uh, cut that fitting off, drill it, tap it, Put this one on, throw some red Loctite on it. Uh, I'm sure it's got some kind of a sealing washer right here. We will use that. Uh, but we're going to put some red Loctite on it and just to make sure that thing doesn't move. And with that repair, that should, we shouldn't have that issue again. And if we end up having to do the top hose and it, we have an issue on the top one, then we'll address it at that point. But since they're good threads there, I'm not gonna risk, you know, messing it up or something, fixing something that's not broke. But uh, I guess we got two shots of doing this because we've still got the oil cooler on my car. But hopefully we can fix this oil cooler, which hopefully is good. It doesn't look like it's got any leaks or anything. It looks to be in real good shape. So let's, uh, let's let me get this one out. I'll probably just get this top one because it's easier to get to. Pull it out and uh, we'll go over and get to work on the oil cooler. All right, so we got it off. These fittings are the same. And it looks like they had maybe some kind of an O-ring there, which would have mean they had some kind of a, maybe it's some kind of a thread sealer. I can't tell, it's like petrified, but no, maybe the remains of like an aluminum washer. It's kind of deteriorated. It seems metallic. I don't know. But I think what we'll do is we'll either put, we'll probably put a brass washer to get one, or copper washer, put one on here, and that will go on there. So what we need is a good flat surface here. Um, we're going to have to 
uh, cut this off. Look down in here, we've got plenty of room for threads. Um, so we need a good flat surface. Let's see, I need to see something real quick. All right, so it opens up right there. So I'm gonna do some measurement and see how far it is. You can see that dark spot, that's where it opens up. I need to see how far it is to that to see um, how much uh, we need to keep of this. Ideally, we would shave it down to this spot there. That's a good flat surface. We could shave it down just right before that and use a flat file and uh, get it perfectly flat up to you know this hex surface right there but i don't know if we have enough depth where we can get enough threads after that so i'm going to do some measuring and we shall see so we need at least that much threads so did some measuring down there to that spot and uh cutting it flush to here i will have I might would have one thread sticking below, but with running a washer on here, the threads are gonna, this is gonna stop right where that opens up. So we should be good there, as long as there's not, as long as this is thick enough, you know, that we can drill it and still have some left. Um, I'm gonna have to assume that's the case because I have no way of telling. So uh, we need a flat surface and I'm not sure we're gonna we would be able to get a flat enough surface uh, trying to cut off here. I think we're gonna have to come down to here where we can get a little bit more meat, a little more ceiling surface right there. And so I'm gonna take a cutoff tool and get not right up to it, but kind of close to it. And then we'll finish the rest of it up with a file. So we make sure we have a good flat surface. Uh, it is 18 millimeter, 1.5. I picked up this tap on Amazon and a decent drill bit, 21 30 seconds drill bit. So uh, you'll need those two items to do this. we go tapped and um, I kind of kind of messed this up not really messed it up but uh, it's okay now but um, I don't know if you could see I kind of had a jig here uh, leveled this leveled across here and evidently these tanks may not be level um, with each other I'm not sure um, because what happened, I put a level across this and I got it level and then I, I strapped this down. And then what I used was, uh, what I would have liked to have done was use a bit that was the inner diameter of that to line the hole up. What I found was this hole saw fit along the outer edge here so I could, it, it fit inside of it. You know, um, this, all the way around 
fit inside of this hole saw. So that's how I centered this. So centered this all up, clamped it down, and then I drilled it. But um, I don't know if something was off. Um, maybe it was rocked this way a little bit. I didn't level it that way. I assumed that if I had this, you know, maybe one of these is kicked that way. I don't know. Whatever it did, it did not drill straight, and so it did not tap straight. Um, and so it was a little crooked. So when I threaded it in, I saw that, and um, so what I did is I took and leveled this surface with this, with the file. So I went through, and so if you look at this, this looks like it's like that because this side of it is filed down more than this side. So I got it to where it fit pretty level. Then I took a Sharpie and marked all the way around it and then started filing to make sure then I got it back flat. Um, you know, filed it until all the, filed it flat until all the Sharpie was gone all the way around so that I knew you know, using the Sharpie kind of like die cam, uh, so that I knew that I had a flat surface again. Flat, but angled surface. That is, I guess, in line, or however you want to call it, with the way it's threaded. So you look at it, it looks kind of off, but um, it's lined up with the flat surface here so that we can get a good seal on here. So this is a copper washer for our, um, I got it in the oil um, gasket section, oil plug gasket section of my local auto parts store. And uh, so that's what it is. I guess it's a oil plug gasket for something, but it's just an M18 copper washer. So we're gonna use that. And um, I kind of used that, I threaded this in and used that washer to kind of go around and then I would mark the spots that it was tight and that's what I used to kind of get my get this lined up like it should be so um, it didn't go straight what best thing I can tell best thing I can say to you is somehow maybe get something in this hole uh, to do your lining up with uh, you know if you can find a bit what I should have probably done is take a bit or um, a piece of rod and you know maybe built it up with some masking tape to where it fit tight in there and use that to line it up um, and try to or put a level across the fitting itself maybe I'm not sure but however I lined it up was not level and I, I was lining up with the tank because you can't level with the fins because you got this bracket on this side um, I guess you could put something on the fins here Maybe, maybe that's what I should have done. Put a block like that and level it like that. Not sure, but somehow make sure you go in straight here or maybe hand drill it. Maybe you can eyeball it better, but we, I made it work. It'll be fine. We got good threads. What I'm gonna do now is uh, put some red Loctite or thread locker on here and thread this in tighten it down and then I'm gonna let it sit for a day before I actually go and put this in so I'm gonna do that real quick and then we'll come back there we are got it tightened down and I'm gonna let this sit for um, and it I got it tight 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 um, and I think it probably crushed down good on that o-ring I slobbered the red Loctite on there um, cause I don't want this thing ever coming out. And so hopefully that holds well. And, you know, it definitely, it definitely tightened down and, uh, we got some good threads on it. So I think this is a good fix. Uh, it shouldn't leak and we're not going to worry with the top one cause the threads are good on it. Uh, I did forget to mention that before I put this in there, I flush, I put two cans of brake clean you know, running from the top down to the bottom. I was real careful, uh, you know, because we drilled a lot here. And I was real careful not to let it, uh, any liquid run this way. 
once I started flushing it to make sure it all stayed down here and didn't get caught up in here. And, you know, it was completely dry starting so that, that you know, the uh, blew it out. Uh, anyway, flushed it, flushed it real well. And just make sure you get all those shavings out. And, you know, since they're aluminum, it's not like you can get a magnet in there and, and get them out. Uh, you just have to keep flushing it, air, and brake clean is what I use. Just kept on, kept on, two cans of brake clean through it. And uh, I think I got every single piece of uh, aluminum out of there. I just, uh, maybe you could figure out some way to catch the um, shavings. I really couldn't, couldn't, so, you know, we ended up with shavings in it, so... Um, Anyway, I'm going to let this sit up and uh, I'll put it on my car. So I think I'm going to end this here. Uh, thanks for watching. Leave a comment down below. Uh, let me know what, um, what you would have done differently. Uh, maybe leveling it up and uh, drilling it to make sure it was straight. Uh, I don't know. Uh, and I did not have a tap wrench big enough. I don't know if you saw on the time lapse, but I threw two 7 16 wrenches, you know, on each side of the tap, or yeah, on each side of the tap. Uh, so it basically acted like a tap wrench. So even though I didn't have a tap wrench, I was, you know, threading it, pulling from both sides. So it's not like a, you know, kicked it over off centered, you know, cause I didn't have a tap wrench. You know, I, I was tapping it straight. And from what I could tell, you know, as soon as it, kind of started in there, it followed the hole, which uh, evidently the hole was not straight. So it is what it is, it's fixed now, and uh, we leveled it up and uh, shouldn't leak. So again, uh, thanks for watching. Leave a comment down below, hit the like button, and subscribe for more.